so I, I have no talent at drawing at all, can make neat drawings, and then I can cut them out and I can paste them into my documents so that I can combine pictures and words. And then I can send it onto the electronic mailbox so somebody else that's living here in Aspen can dial up a phone number and get their mail and see this drawing that I made. So we're starting to break out, and you can just see it now, and it's really exciting. So where we are is that the personal computer, computer is a new medium, and that society and computers are really meeting for the first time in the 80s. In 15 years, it's going to be all over in terms of this first phase, getting these tools out into society in large numbers. But during the next 15 years, if we really, we have an opportunity to do it great or to do it so-so. And uh, what a lot of us at Apple are working on is trying to do it great. I want to look at one last thing, and then we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, what is a computer program? Do you know what a computer program is? Anybody? No? Sort of? Sort of. It's an odd thing. It's really an odd thing. It's, it's, you can't, if, I mean, you, you've never seen an electron, but computer programs have no physical manifestation at all. They're simply ideas expressed on paper. Computer programs are archetypal. What do I mean by that? Let's compare computer programming to television programming. Again, if you go back and you look at the tapes of the JFK funeral in 1963, I guess, you'll start to cry. You will feel a lot of the same feelings you felt when you were watching that 20 years ago. Why? Because through the art of television programming, we are very good at capturing a set of experiences, an experience, two experiences, 20 experiences, and being able to recreate them. We're very good at that. It takes a lot of money, and it's somewhat limited, but we can do a pretty good job of that. You can really feel the excitement of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Computer programming does something a little different. What computer programming does is it captures the underlying principles of an experience. The, not the experience itself, but the underlying principles of the experience. And those principles can enable thousands of different experiences that all follow those laws, if you will. And the perfect example is the video game. What does the video game do? It follows the laws of gravity, of angular momentum, and it sets up this stupid little pong game. But the ball always follows these laws. No two pong games are ever the same. And yet every single pong game follows these underlying principles. Give you another example. There's a neat program called Hammurabi. And Hammurabi, there's seven-year-old kids playing this. And it's a game, and you comes up on the screen, and goes, and you're King Hammurabi. He goes, oh, King Hammurabi. And you get to be King Hammurabi of the ancient kingdom of Sumeria for 10 years. He comes, oh, King Hammurabi, this is year one. You have a 1,000 bushels of wheat in storage. You have 100 people, and you have 100 acres of land. Land is trading at 24 bushels an acre. Would you like to sell any land? No. Would you like to buy any land? No. How much would you like to plant? Or feed, how much would you like to plant? And it turns out that if you don't plant enough, some of your people will starve the next year. And if you plant a lot, then people will come from the surrounding villages because you've got a hot village to live in and you feed them well. It's crude, but basically there are these seven-year-old kids playing with this macroeconomic model. And you can argue about the, the, the content of the model, but one thing you can't argue about, they will sit there for hours and play that and learn. And we've got to get our models better and better and more sophisticated but that is an interactive way of learning that none of us ever had when we were growing up. And again, thousands of individual experiences, but all based on that one set of underlying principles. When I was um, going to school, I um, had a few great teachers and a lot of mediocre teachers. And the thing that, that probably kept me out of jail was books. Because I could go read what Aristotle wrote or what Plato wrote uh, and uh, I didn't have to have an intermediary in the way. And a book was a phenomenal thing. It got right from the source to the destination without anything in the middle. The problem was you can't ask Aristotle a question. And I think as we look towards the next 50 to 100 years, if we really can come up with these machines that can capture an underlying spirit or an underlying set of principles or an underlying way of looking at the world, then when the next Aristotle comes around, maybe if he carries around one of these machines with him his whole life, his or her whole life, 
and types in all this stuff, then maybe someday after the person's dead and gone, we can ask this machine, hey, what, what would Aristotle have said? What about this? And maybe we won't get the right answer, but maybe we will. And that's really exciting to me. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing. So what do you want to talk about? 